everyone welcome back to another video here on the channel today we'll see what windows mobile 6.5 can still do 12 years later windows mobile 6.5 came out in may of 2009 and it was released because windows phone 7 was not ready at the time so they had to release this version instead this version was a significant upgrade over windows mobile 6.1 it brought several features like adapting the interface to be more finger friendly and including a marketplace to download apps among other features. However, Windows Mobile 6.5 rapidly became obsolete because only one year later, Windows Phone 7 was released and because it was a completely revamped operating system, it was not compatible with the older Windows Mobile apps so developers focused on the new and more advanced Windows Phone 7 instead. Windows Mobile was used for the most part on PTAs, but then smartphones started using it. And this operating system was a more advanced OS for people who wanted more out of their portable devices. But the competition caught up really fast and by the time Windows Mobile 6.5 came out, it didn't offer that much functionality over traditional phones of the time. To put things into perspective, this version came out the same year Android 2 and iPhone OS 3 were out. So because of that, Windows Mobile 6.5 felt dated by the time it, it was released. Well, in my hands I've got the Motorola ES400, a hybrid between a PDA and smartphone, released back in June of 2010. On the front we've got a physical keyboard which is not the best I've used but it gets the job done. In the middle it has a trackpad and it would tap on it. A mouse cursor appears on the screen. Then we have a 3 inch resistive touchscreen with a 480 by 640 resolution. The panel itself is really not that bad and it's actually better than the screen of a lot of old Android phones like the Galaxy Y I reviewed last month and despite it being a resistive touchscreen you can actually use it with your fingers unlike most other PDAs where you were pretty much forced to use a stylus. On the right side we have the volume rocker, a camera button and one of the two speakers. On the left side we have the 2.5mm headphone jack, the second speaker and a micro USB port. On the back we can find a 3.2 megapixel camera, removable back, slot for the stylus, which I don't have anymore, and this weird thingy is sticking out, I don't know what material it is, but as you can see it has aged pretty bad since it's kind of melting. Apart from that, there's also something really interesting, which is a fingerprint scanner meaning this phone beat the iPhone by 3 years in that aspect and I know it's clearly not as advanced as the iPhone's fingerprint scanner. On the inside we have a 3000mAh battery and two slots, one for the microSD card and the other one for the SIM card. So with all of this out of the way, let's see what this operating system can still do. First of all, because stock Windows Mobile was so ugly and hard to use, manufacturers had to make their own custom interfaces. In this case, this is Motorola's custom UI, which is pretty decent. Then we have Samsung and TouchWiz, but in my opinion, HTC Sense was by far the best interface for Windows Mobile, to the point it fixed Windows Mobile and made it a more enjoyable experience. If we press the Windows button, it will take us to a menu with several apps, most of them basic apps like phone and messaging. This phone also has a notification panel which is split in several tiles. The first one shows a list of recent apps and unlike Android, it doesn't kill the apps running in the background so you have to manually close them because if you run out of RAM, the phone will become unresponsive and you'll have to turn it off. Second tile shows you the storage and RAM. 
sound profiles here you can turn on and off the wi-fi bluetooth 3g adjust brightness among other options alarms wi-fi options this is where you would find your notifications for example new messages or missed calls but i don't have any right now so i can't show you and finally shortcuts to several settings this phone does detect my sim card and because it has access to the local 3.5g network we could still use it for basic calls and messages on the apps menu there are many interesting apps but sadly a lot of them don't work anymore apps like the email the marketplace messenger microsoft money and weather and then we have the internet explorer which barely works at all but on the other hand we also have many other apps that still work one of them being the pdf reader which works really well the same goes for microsoft word 2010 which you can use to read old documents and even do some basic editing though there's a feature that would have come in handy if you were a student back in 2010 so let's say you wanted to read a document you made on a computer but on your smartphone so you could copy that file to a pen drive and with the help of a otg cable we can see what's inside that pen drive and load any document inside for example this word file you could also do it with pdfs presentations excel files and not only that but we could also do the same with other things such as music pictures and even we could put movies in the pen drive and watch them on the go for example this video we downloaded last time and because this thing has stereo speakers it doesn't sound as bad as it looks multimedia wise it held up relatively well but what about more advanced things such as web browsing the thing is the browser it counts with is the internet explorer which doesn't load anything outside bing.com then we've got skyfire but sadly it doesn't work anymore so we're gonna use the old but reliable opera vt and opera mobile these two browsers allow us to load many pages such as google and wikipedia and even some other pages like the bbc news but it struggles with the more bloated pages of today like apple.com where some images are missing but it does load some of the page which is better than nothing especially considering internet explorer doesn't load anything also thanks to opera we can use facebook just fine though back in the day there was a dedicated facebook app but i didn't bother to install it because probably doesn't work anymore instagram on the other hand we can only make it to the main page but it won't let us sign in because the browser is too old twitter does let us sign in but a lot of icons and pictures don't load anymore but you can at least read the text in some tweets unfortunately we can't watch youtube videos anymore but only two years ago in 2019 we could still watch videos using the flash player but it doesn't work anymore another app that works surprisingly well is google maps the gps doesn't work anymore but everything else still works you can still create custom routes on google maps turn on satellite view and even use the street view option which works pretty well when it comes to gaming windows mobile got a bunch of games but most of them are pretty bad so i'm gonna show you the games i found more interesting
Even though Windows Mobile didn't get many games, emulators are here to save the day. We can emulate the Atari 2600, NES and SNES. I even read in some blogs there was a Game Boy Color emulator, but I couldn't find it. But for this video I'm only going to focus on the SNES because it's more demanding and it has better games compared to the other consoles. The emulator works really well, but first you have to configure the buttons and the screen orientation. When it comes to the camera, it varies from device to device, but in this case, the camera is horrible. Honestly, my old Nokia 6120 and its 2 megapixels could take way better shots than this thing. To wrap things up, we did manage to get a lot of views out of Windows Mobile. 
however i wouldn't use this operating system anymore but i don't know if my house were broken into and the thief stole all of my phones and tablets then yes i would happily use this thing until i buy a new one and i wanted to thank you all for watching this video and if you liked it please leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one peace out